Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to discuss backpropagation and what its role is in the training process of an artificial neural network. So let's get to it. We're going to be building on concepts that we covered in a couple of previous videos. These two videos cover what it means to train an artificial neural network and how a network learns. So if you haven't seen those yet, go ahead and check them out now and then come back to this video once you finish up there. Here, we're going to start out by first going over a quick recap of some of the points about stochastic gradient descent that we learned in those previous videos. Then we're going to talk about where backpropagation comes into the picture. And we'll then spend the majority of our time discussing the intuition behind what backpropagation is actually doing. Now, backpropagation is full calculus, and we won't be going into many details about the underlying math here because in this particular series of videos, we're mostly focusing on concepts and coding. But if you guys want to hear more about the math behind it after you watch this video, then let me know in the comments. In the previous videos I referenced, we discussed how, during training, stochastic gradient descent, or SGD, works to minimize the loss function by updating the weights with each epoch. We mentioned how this updating occurs by calculating the gradient, or taking the derivative, of the loss function with respect to the weights in the model, but we didn't really elaborate on this point. That's what we're going to discuss now. This act of actually calculating the gradients in order to update the weights occurs through a process called backpropagation. Okay, let's get ourselves set up. We have a sample arbitrary network here with two hidden layers. For simplicity, going forward with our explanation, we're going to be dealing with a single sample of input being supplied to our model, rather than a batch of input at one time. Now, as a quick refresher on the training process, Remember that whenever we pass data to the model, we've seen that this data propagates forward through the network until it reaches the output layer. Also, recall that each node in the model receives its input from the previous layer. And this input is a weighted sum of the weights at each of these connections multiplied by the previous layer's output. We then pass this weighted sum to an activation function. The result from this activation function is the output for a particular node and is then passed as part of the input for the nodes in the next layer. And this happens for each layer in the network until we reach the output layer. And this process is referred to as forward propagation. Now, once we reach the output layer, we obtain the resulting output from the model for the given input. So if we're working to classify images of animals here, for example, then each of these output nodes would correspond to a different type of animal. And the output node with the highest activation would be the output that the model thinks is the best match for the corresponding input. Given the output result, we then calculate the loss on this result. The way the loss is calculated is going to depend on the particular loss function we're using, but for simplicity, let's just think of it for now as being how far off the model is on classifying the given input. So we can think of it as the difference between what the model predicted for a given input and what the given input actually is. We have a video on the loss function if you want to check that out further. All right, then we've discussed how gradient descent's objective is to minimize this loss function. This is done by taking the derivative, that is the gradient of the loss function with respect to the weights in the model. And this is where backpropagation comes in. Backpropagation is the tool that gradient descent uses to calculate the gradient of the loss function. So as we just mentioned, the process of moving the data forward through the network is called forward propagation. Given that the process we're about to cover is called backpropagation, you'd be correct if you're thinking that this means we're somehow going to be working backwards through the network. We are. So we have the output that was generated for our given input. The loss then gets calculated for that output, and now gradient descent starts updating our weights using backpropagation in order to minimize the loss. We're going to now move our conversation to what backpropagation is doing by focusing on the intuition behind it. To update the weights, gradient descent is going to start by looking at the activation outputs from our output nodes. 
say that this output node here maps to the output that our given input actually corresponds to. If that's the case, then gradient descent understands that the value of this output should increase and that the values from all the other output nodes should decrease. Doing this will help SGD lower the loss for this input. So we know that the values of these output nodes come from the weighted sum of the weights for these connections here being multiplied by the output from the previous layer and then passing this weighted sum to the output layer's activation function. Therefore, if we want to update the values for these output nodes in the way that we just discussed, one way to do this is by updating the weights for these connections that are connected to the output layer. Another way of doing this is by changing the activation output from the previous layer. Now, we can't actually directly change the activation output because it's a calculation based on the weights and the previous layer's output. But we can indirectly influence a change in this layer's activation output by jumping backwards and, again, updating the weights here in the same way we just discussed for the output layer. We continue this process until we reach the input layer. And we don't want to change any of the values from the nodes in our input layer since this contains our actual input data. So as you can see, we're moving backwards through our network, updating the weights from right to left in order to slightly move the values from our output nodes in the direction that they should be going in order to help lower the loss. Meaning for an individual sample, SGD is trying to increase the output value for the correct output node and decrease the output value for the incorrect output nodes, which in turn decreases the loss. And we're doing this in a backwards fashion since the output of each layer depends on the weights in the output of the previous layers. So when we modify the weights in those previous layers, those modifications are going to influence what happens in later layers. It's also important to note that in addition to updating weights to move in the desired direction, i.e. positive or negative, backpropagation is also working to efficiently update the weights so that the updates are being done in a manner that helps to reduce the loss function most efficiently. So the proportion in which some weights are updated relative to others may be higher or lower, depending on how much effect the update is going to have on the network as a whole to lower the loss. Now, the updated values that we end up getting for each of the corresponding weights are actually the corresponding derivatives of the loss function with respect to each of these individual weights that we were using in our example here. And note, yes, we did just go through this example for a single input, but this exact same process will occur for all the input for each batch we provide to our network. And the resulting updates to the weights in the network are going to be the average updates that are calculated for each individual input. So then these average results for each weight are indeed the corresponding gradients of our loss function with respect to each weight. All right, we've done a lot, so let's give a quick summary of it all. When training an artificial neural network, we pass data into our model. The way this data flows through the model is via forward propagation where we're repeatedly calculating the weighted sum of the previous layer's activation output with the corresponding weights, and then passing this sum to the next layer's activation function. We do this until we reach the output layer, and at this point we calculate the loss on our output, and then gradient descent works to minimize this loss. Gradient descent does this minimization process by first calculating the gradient of the loss function with respect to the weights, and then updating the weights in the network accordingly. To do the actual calculation of the gradient, we now know that gradient descent uses backpropagation. Remember to watch the videos referenced earlier on training a neural network if some of the pieces about gradient descent were a little unclear here. Okay, that's the intuition behind what backpropagation is doing. But of course, this is all done with math behind the scenes. The backpropagation process we just went through uses calculus. Recall that backpropagation is working to calculate the derivative of the loss with respect to each weight. To do this calculation, backpropagation is using the chain rule to calculate the gradient of the loss function.
If you've taken a calculus course, then you may be familiar with the chain rule as being a method for calculating the derivative of the composition of two or more functions. As I mentioned at the start, we're not going to go into the details for the calculations that backpropagation does in this video. But if you do want to see the math, just let me know in the comments and we'll talk about organizing a future video specifically for that. So at this point, you should now have a fuller picture for what's going on when you're training a neural network, where backpropagation fits into this process, and what the intuition is behind backpropagation. Thanks for watching. See you next time.